Um, today, we will uh, look at a very simple uh, topic. And I trust that we will learn together. We will contribute. And I want to believe uh, tech, uh, the media would take the mics around, even as we trust God to use, to speak to us. I will do less of talking today, not because I'm not prepared for today. <laughs> Amen. But because uh, I would want us to benefit from the pastors that we have on, and the ministers that we have here. I used to have a teacher back then in school. He wasn't that good. So whatever he gave us as an exercise, if you're unable to do it, he would not make attempt to solve the equation. He would just ask you, take it up. That's your homework. So, but today we will do it together, not because we don't know it, but because we trust that the Lord will use us and will use you to bless the body. I, I did mention that we're looking at a very, very simple topic, but yet con a bit complex. Forgiveness. <clears throat> Forgiveness. Um, generally, we are living in a world that uh, the devil is conscious of the time that he has. He knows that the time is short and is using every means to make sure that people, that believers don't make it. Um, sometimes we want to assume that some things are not important. But I read on account of a, very, of a very known man of God who died, and he said he approached the gate of heaven and he was sent back only for him to reconcile with someone. Now, that underscores that not forgiving is a serious matter. It's not as simple as we would, or the devil will have us assume it to be. And the devil is making effort to ensure that people don't go in just by simple acts of unforgiveness. Now, the question is, in fact, sometimes you don't even know why people, why they have you, why they hold you in mind. Why they are hungry at you. Why they are not forgiving you. In some cases, you believe that you have not wronged anyone. In fact, you so much have justification for your action that you, you would not see any reason to apologize. And that's the point that the devil is taking advantage of, even in believers. So it's important for us to then know that just opposing with any form of offense, any form of sin, unforgiveness, is also as important as those things. Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Matthew 14, uh, Matthew 6, 14 through 15. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, as simple as this passage appears to be, the simple truth is that if you find that if you if you find it difficult to forgive, God is saying, "I will not forgive you." Now, no one will get to the help. You can't get into the God's kingdom with offense. And uh, we will look at so many things that constitute offense. In fact, we will also look at why some people are naturally angry. Some people are angry. They are not. They are holding you so high. And so badly because they just feel that God is blessing you to be. Is he the only one? And because of that thing in their hearts, each time they see you, there is something inside of them that triggers hatred, that triggers resentment. Of inadvertently, they compete with you 
why you are not competing with them? Why must any time we want to, of course, not choir. Now, any time we want to sing, why must he be, why must, okay, he, of course, because we only have two of them in the choir. <laughs> Amen. Two of them that sing, yes. Amen. Don't worry, Seth, I don't know it mean like that. I used to sing tenor. Mm -hmm. We're always uh, a few. So, why, why is this person preferred? In fact, even in church, among pastors, thank God we have pastors in the house. Back home, you will understand. Even here, the rate, the level of competition. And you ask yourself, what are they looking for? To what end? What do they stand to gain? Maybe position. Well, maybe it's not because they are not busy. Because sometimes you see some people, they are busy, they are rich, they are comfortable. But that post, and if you don't address them by in certain way and certain manner, you are in trouble. And sometimes, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I remember years ago, my, my Baptist pastor lived just behind our house. So, they were young. They just posted them. In fact, them, and uh, when they got into church, uh, there's this man, you know, you always see those elders in the church. And they, one of the other greeted the pastor's wife. And he said, and, so, I mean, of course, the, man, the, the woman grew up practically before the man. So he saw her so she, I mean, so when she saw this, when she greeted, when he greeted the woman, the pastor's wife, pastor said, "Ah, uh -uh, you can't just greet us like that." Yes, you, you knew me when I was growing up, but God has elevated us. You know, there's no better way. If, you know, there are things when said in certain way, in certain dialect, in certain language, it will carry the weight. Ah, uh -uh, you cannot just greet us. Oh, God has elevated us. So, it shows to you that it is not limited to people just uh, who are in the world. It is also in the church, where things that ordinarily Christians should not have such meanings to is the very core, is, very, is the thing that is drawing them away from the focus. Pride. Pride. And one thing about pride is that sometimes you don't know that you are proud. No one that said, search me, O oh Lord. You know, when you get to a point that you assume that as far as my human imagination would conceive, I do not think I have anything that is contrary or that I'm doing anything contrary to your will. But perhaps that in the event that I do have, in law, we will say in the unlikely event, so, he says, search me, Lord. I do not want to take anything for granted. See if there's any out of forgiveness, unforgiveness or anything in me. So, it's important for us to know as believers that we must be conscious of our actions, of our thoughts, of our inactions, because sometimes the devil, if care is not taken, gets into them, and before you know it, is it the only one? After all, we got, we, we, we got to this church well before them, and then we should be the one to sit in front. Thank God they don't struggle. I mean, the ministers I've seen here, they prefer to sit you know, behind. Amen. But some people, you, do, you dare not sit there. In fact, there are churches where for each family, for some people, they have their, you cannot sit there. That's that man's seat. Daddy, it seems that's your seat, right? <laughs> Amen. But he won't, he won't be angry, even if you decide to sit there. <laughs> and I know that you also sit. <laughs> Brashala likes sitting in that. Praise the Lord. But the point God is drawing our attention to is 
Unforgiveness is terrible. Unforgiveness is such that will prevent or could prevent a man from getting to heaven. And that's why we have to be careful. Now, sometimes the fact that A is succeeding is what brings... Um, you want to talk... I, I, mean, I would need help here. Because it, it, there's a, there are levels to it. You will think that you are not angry. And you will look at him. Look at our brother. He just landed, right? He just came in. And he has had cost to travel within the space of two, three months. And yet somebody, some of us are here. 20, 20 years, they have not traveled. And they are, they are just angry. So, I tell you, they have not been here for 20 years. And I, I actually traveled it last year. Amen. <laughs> but the point is that that alone could form a ground for someone inadvertently to start to hate someone, someone else. Now, you go on again, and you now, the person is now given opportunity to do something. Ah, uh-huh. they just, uh, what's your day now? They have just arrived. Then the next thing is, when you see him or see the person outside, that's exactly what comes to mind. But you are still praying. You are still leading prayers. You are still leading praises. And yet something is growing inside of you. And the next stage is resentment. Who can tell us what resentment means? I know we have people who are extremely... God bless you. That's the better way. You know when you don't know, even, you just feel this thing. You just... As pronounced, as res- you just resent that person. Yeah? Repo- it, it, it repulsive. The person looks at in almost, you don't want to have anything. Mild hunger, mild. God bless you, because those are the levels. You don't know. They are growing, that thing is growing gradually. It's growing gradually. Now, mild hunger. You are not angry, yet you are angry. <laughs> mild. Because the moment you see that person, and that mild anger comes, inside of you, the devil hates you, or helps you to say, ah, you are not angry now. I mean, you, like you have not sinned now. You are just about sinning. <laughs> but he won't tell you that. So, it, it, you know, it keeps coming up like that. Now, after the sentiments, what next? Hatred. Hatred. I just don't know why. I just hate him. I just can't stand him. I just can't stand him. Now, the next question is, under what circumstance or sa- do you think a man can be justified to, to have all those things inside of him? Hatred, mild anger, resentment. Can we just, because we need to understand and we're trying or getting somewhere here. Do you think you can be justified to continue having those things in mind? The person has, uh, you know, there was, there was a story of one man. You know, somebody will just disturb, they just want to destroy you without reason. And that gives you almost a legal standing, a, a, a good ground for you to be hungry, for you to resent that person, for you to hate that person, for you not to want, you don't want to have anything to do with that person. In fact, they have hurt you so deeply that you, you just say, I would not just forgive them. So the question is, I'm not sure we all agree that we do not have any legal reason to be hungry or not to forgive. And I'll tell you why. Now, the reason is this. Or oh, that will take us to the next question. Now, if you, assume, if, you, if you agree with me that you have no basis whatsoever, either spiritually, you know some people can have a spiritual reason to be angry. They are just, they are too spiritual to say, they will tell you that 
I'm going to curse him. And they will tell you, because of what you have done, they will not remember the aspect of God's mercy and love. That even if you have done this, God, can still, God has shown you mercy and you expect her to do the same. But in their, in their, in their majesty, in their very strong and powerful position, majesty, they will just, particularly some prophets, they can cause. So after all, prophets did that in the Bible. And Bear came and swallowed them. So you cannot just toy with the anointed man of God. So sometimes people are spirit, they, they, are, they form for themselves spiritual, perhaps not necessarily legitimate this time around, grants for them to be angry, for them not to forgive, for them to vent, and for them to, you know, instead of forgiving, to go on to punish that person. Now, the, I said, so if we believe that, that we have no reason whatsoever not to forgive someone, not to forgive ourselves, so why do we find it so difficult to forgive? Now, I'm sure you want to say, well, I'm not sure it's difficult for me to forgive. Now, the scripture says, Matthew chapter 6, for if you forgive those who forgive, who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you don't, he will not. Now, the Bible also says in Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 21. Romans 12, 17 through 21. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live a peaceful life with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine. Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. So we cannot believe the the supremacy of the scripture and accept certain portion of the scripture why we disregard the others. Now, if God is saying, when your enemy is hungry, give them food. When they are thirsty, give them... So who is your enemy? Who can tell us who is your... <laughs> who is our... <laughs> eh? The person you are sent is your enemy. God bless you, man. Who is your enemy? I don't even know whether I have people sending me here. <laughs> you know, when you see um, anointed uh, men and women of God, you know them. God bless you, man. Your enemy can even be under your same roof. And yet, you would still not... Uh... And that takes us to husband and wife. Amen. Ah, people say, uh, don't go there. If I ask where we are going. Amen. But do you know that, do you know one interesting thing I've, I've realized and that is, that is helping me is that when you think that you are the only one, when you think you, there is no basis for you to have conflicts at home and you see what is happening elsewhere, you will thank God. So he underscores a point that there is no perfect relationship. But of course, regardless, you will still see people maintain their ground. By reason of what I do, the ratio of uh, Nigerians, particularly within certain brackets, you know, within certain age, what I've seen I ever heard my boss, I thought I was only the one, you know, having that thought. But that, the lawyer that called that man was saying he was, he was having problems at home and they were about separating. So they were talking on phone. The man said, I don't even understand what is happening to us, Nigeria, that this thing is now, you know, moving in uh, 
in, in a manner that we did not envisage. Now, that underscores one point. How do we resolve problems? Why is it difficult for me to forgive? But if you have not been dealt with by God in, ch in the church to learn forgiveness and to say sorry even when you have not offended, then you should not expect anything less at all. So, and sometimes the man that you ran away from years ago, ah, no, he did this to me, I will never talk to him. And that guy went. Not knowing that God placed those people for a reason within that season to teach you what will sustain you in your home when it comes to forgiveness. So when people, when, when they do a lot of things towards us, they are not honestly, sometimes are not their enemies. They are not our enemies. After all, God said, have you considered your servant, Job? So the only offense that Job had was because God said, this man is my own. Ah, ah, nothing can, there is nothing you do to him, he will not betray the Lord. So, our perceived enemies might be planted by God for a reason. So, until, and if you don't pass that exam, you keep repeating. And when you keep repeating, if you go on and repeat it at all, you will just see that just one thing. Uh, Bishop, oh, they both said something. He was preaching one Sunday and said, a couple came and they had seen it. He was close to them and they, they had issues. And the wife said, no, I'm going. So the wife made up her mind and she was saying, And Bishop said some said, okay, before you go, try and see me. So when he saw Bishop, he said, of course, you are free to. Yeah, did, no problem. You have said everything. You just, do me a favor, just one thing. Go to him and uh, kneel down. Of course, you don't want to hear kneel down here. This is Canada, right? They don't do it. But, but there's, there's no harm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> You see, I wanted to say something, but I realized that my wife is here. So I said, <laughs> so let me not say it because, <laughs> yeah? Ah. <laughs> see, let me tell you something. You see, no, <laughs> you see, no, <laughs> just like a parliament, whatever you say on the, <laughs> On the parliament, you are immune. But when you step down and you get up, you people will not be there. <laughs> no, I'm sure she would do anything. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And of course, for you to also know, I, I, I mean, I, I love listening to men of God. I, I, I saw a video by Archbishop Benson Dowser. And he made an honest statement, very pregnant. He said, I can come here with my and do my music. But you see that woman? Hey, she's tough. And that, you know, the point he was trying to say is this. We can display the anointing. But when we get home, when we have to say sorry, we have to say it. You know what Bishop Oedepo said to the woman? He said, now that you're here, of course, after this thing, I'll tell you to do one thing. Once you do it, Please, you are free. Take your things and move out of the house. He said, go there. I know you. I mean, you are, you, are, you are right, I know. But just do me a favor for my sake. Kneel down and say sorry to him. Then you can pack your things and leave thereafter. And he went there. She went there. She knelt down. She said sorry. And the woman, and the man was shocked. And the woman embraced her. And that was the end of the choir. Conflict in homes sometimes, and no matter how you drag it, until both of you agree to resolve it, it remains unresolved. No matter the intervention of a third party, you still have to sit down and discuss and make it work. And unforgiveness is something <laughs> that uh, you just don't want to continue. Let's just mention a few things. 
what are the what are the effects of unforgiveness? What somebody that is just unforgiving? What are those things that you see in that person? Sickness, God bless you, man. Anger, you just see them there. Greet them. Mm. You greet. Ask you, Lord, this word is not difficult. Pastor, you are a pastor. <laughs> you see, amen. You see, when you are, when you are, when you, when you are not forgiving, you will be sorrowful. A non-forgiving person is a sorrowful person. They don't know. They will not know what is biting them. They will just be angry. Eh? They will be restless. <laughs> God. You see, some people will get to a point that they will hit their head on the wall. You have not seen that kind of anger before. They will, they will destroy things in their home. You remember this woman, um, um, wife of Pastor Jerese? He said, she said the kind of anger that the husband was one preaching one day and said the woman will get angry and will scatter things on the table before they even realize that they have done anything. That's the extent to which anger can take a man. Anger. And one terrible thing about anger is that the person who is angry, is, is it that he believes that he has a reason to be angry and continue to be angry? Or that... The, you see, you can't continue in anger and expect God's blessing. You can't continue in anger and not be ha and, and expect to be happy. A non forgiving person is what? Is an unhappy person. Sorrowful. So when you see someone that is sorrowful, sir, bro, I hope you are not angry. I hope I'm not the cause. It, yes, it will open doors to the devil. What kind of prayer can you pray? Or what answer do you expect when you are angry? It's caught up to death. So, honestly, what, what we have mentioned will take it one after the other for you to understand the gravity. Sometimes we do not avert our minds to the implication of these things. They are terribly bad. And unfortunately, some people can be angry for one year, some for, for 10 days, some for 10 years. And by the time they tell you whatever, it is, ah, you feel like slapping them. Because all the way, there is no way for you to honor, for you to have conceived why they're angry. And in fact, such person, you are like, you are, you, you are inside a cage, you put yourself in a cage. Unfortunately, you are angry. The other person does not know. Now, look at it. The only thing that resolved that marriage was, ah, my wife had not apologized before in my life. Uh -uh. So, now knelt down. Now, she's saying sorry again. That man says, Kata, say we can't end this marriage like this. Ah, uh, This one is new. You know, when you see new things, you say, ah, ah. Hey, hey, that's what we've been saying. And that was how that home was mended. So it takes two people to make the marriage work. It only takes just one person to destroy it. Just one person. They will talk to this person and say, no, me, I will not. I ah, know I will not. There's nothing you say. To, as long as one person is not say, the Bible says, can two work together except they agree. The emotional well-being of that person would, would, not be, would not be stable. Bitterness is another thing. The person is just bitter. Physical illness, just like our, uh, our mommy has said, the person is, sickness is inevitable. Emotional stress, that person is just stressed out because he or she is angry. Another important thing that happens to people who are unforgiving is rage, rage. They are just, 
Who can tell us? Uh, um, yeah, rage. Is that the word? Rage. 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 R A G. Yeah, rage. You see? Unconstrained anger. Advanced anger. That's top level. <laughs> eh? You see, from, even from the other, momentary madness. So, and when they say, when they say you, are, you are mad now, say, are you now, you know, you are now fighting again that they say you are mad. But that's exactly what we're exhibiting. Momentary madness. Tell your neighbor, I refuse to be angry. Tell your neighbor, I refuse to be. I don't know why husbands are afraid to tell their wife like that. Why? It's just, <laughs> amen. It's so, you know, of course you'll be angry, but don't, <laughs> eh? don't sin. Is it possible to be angry and not sin as, as uh, recommended by the Bible? (laughs) 